plan of the talk, I will start from introduction about uh, quantum coherent mesoscopic uh, phenomena. So I apologize to experts, but I know that many people here are not uh, from this field. So uh, I will say a few things that are trivial for experts. And then there will be three uh, parts. Uh, um, which I will dis uh, discuss the effects of decoherence due to interaction uh, on uh, wires and rings, namely first diffusive and then uh, Latinger, so strictly uh, one D system, and finally it will be again Latinger, but uh, non-equilibrium effect. So I start uh, from uh, this uh, introductory uh, part. So there is a, a number of uh, 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 remarkable uh, mesoscopic uh, phenomena that are in fact uh, close relatives uh, of the uh, uh, Aronoff uh, bomb effect uh, and uh, some of them will be also discussed uh, in the talk. So uh, uh, first this is a weak localization uh, namely if in, a, in a disordered system there is a uh, contribu quantum contribution to the conductivity, so this is a diagrammatic uh, form, but it's easy to understand in terms of paths. There is a contribution which comes from interference of particle doing the same paths in uh, two uh, 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 directions, so <coughs> time reversed paths, and in, technically it's called uh, Couperon uh, uh, loop. And uh, this gives a, a correction to the conductivity, which is called weak localization. Normally, it's localized, and in some special cases, can be anti-localizing. So, normally, it suppresses the conductivity. And uh, first, it's like an Arona bomb. This is an interference of two paths. Second, it also can be controlled by weak magnetic field through the loop. And, uh, and essentially, this is a phase factor that is working. Uh, so in this sense, it's an Aronoff bomb type effect uh, of the uh, magnetic field. And the, this is just one loop effect, but in fact, it may also lead to much stronger when uh, such contribution, when first order is not sufficient, then it may lead to a strong localization and, and does lead and uh, under some transition. So the second phenomenon is that of mesoscopic uh, fluctuations. Uh, you have, in general, also contributions to uh, conductance or conductivity of a sample which come from interference of two uh, arbitrary two paths, like shown here by blue and red, and in general they average to zero. Uh, on the other hand, if you take a square of this, so look at fluctuations, you will get something finite, and it turns out that due to phase uh, coherence in a system, it's uh, unexpectedly large compared to the classical what you would expect classically, and this is a famous uh, phenomenon of mesoscopic conductance fluctuations and also leading to so-called universal conductance fluctuations because it turns out that the, the amplitude of this fluctuation doesn't depend on system size and all in any details as long as the sample, or just on geometry of sample, as long as the sample is phase coherent. And the third phenomenon is related to effects of interaction, namely if you consider uh, system in the, uh, uh, the presence of uh, interaction between electrons, uh, uh, Coulomb interaction, which is of course normally zero, uh, and look at the tunneling uh, density of states, the system, so it's technically it's just an imaginary part of the green function with uh, equal spatial points as a function of energy, then there is a, a contribution to it due to interaction, which is just a Hartree Fock type diagrams dressed by uh, impurity lines, or one can also draw it in terms of paths, and when one does it in terms of paths, one sees again that there, is a, there are some loops, and there is a coherence between uh, sort of particle and hole, which are here uh, red uh, and blue, so this leads uh, again to the uh, uh, quantum uh, contribution to the, uh, to the uh, resistivity, and also what is shown here is not resistivity, it's a, it's a tunnel in density of states, and the correction to the tunnel in density of states is manifest itself in zero bias anomaly in tunneling uh, current voltage uh, uh, characteristics. So zero bias anomaly means that the conduct, tunneling conductance is suppressed uh, at low bias, and this again is a phenomenon related to uh, uh, quantum coherence. 
Um, so, uh, and to uh, emphasize a even closer relation between this mesoscopic uh, uh, phenomena like weak localization and our own of bomb effect, so let me finish this part with a reminder about uh, Altschuler uh, Aronov uh, Spivak effect, which played a, a very important role in experimental verification of this uh, uh, weak uh, localization um, ideas. Yeah, for those who are not from this community, yeah, if you can think that I misspelled the name of Yekir Aronov, I'm not because that's a different uh, person. Arkady Aronov was an uh, outstanding uh, theoretician and who would be 70 this year, but unfortunately, very sadly, he died at a very young age, 55. And uh, when at this time he was uh, appointed just a few months before he accepted the offer uh, to the Weizmann Institute, was a professor here. What I misspelled? Yeah, okay, okay. This, of course, is indeed misspelling, but you cannot blame me because I copied it from the journal. And, there is a, and also there is a good explanation to it because, of course, this is a translation from Russian. This is a Russian journal. This is uh, uh, GTP letters, which was uh, written in Russian and then translated to English. And, uh, of course, in Russian, the name of Yekir Aronov is just written in this way because, uh, because there is... Uh, no letters that you could put between these two A, which you would not uh, pronounce. So, uh, 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 in a, uh, which, so, so it's a be, it's a best way. It's a best approximation. Let's, let's, so this is a direct trans. But I, but I guess anyway, the two names uh, uh, have sort of the same, I guess, uh, origin. So it's just uh, okay. Yeah. So back to back to physics. So what they propose it. They proposed a very nice experiment, namely to, to measure weak localization in cylinder geometry. And basically, again, you have the, the idea is that, again, you have a Cooperon contribution so that the particle can go in two directions uh, ar uh, around the cylinder, and they will interfere, and so there will be this weak localization pump interference. However, now you can control it by the magnetic flux through the cylinder and it will lead to a runoff uh, bomb effect. But the difference is that since this is a Cooperon, so that uh, there are two trajectories going to the whole circle, that will be the Aronov bomb effect corresponding to the charge 2E. So therefore, uh, the uh, periodicity will be half uh, of the uh, flux uh, quantum. And this was immediately observed in experiment by Sherwin and Sherwin, father and son, and that was a very important step in development uh, uh, of the field. There was a nice review by Aronoff and Sharvin, by the way, where this experiment and related phenomena described. Uh, okay, so now let me, uh, after this uh, introduction, come to uh, the subject, the first, uh, uh, my work uh, on decoherence in diffusive wires and rings. Well, actually, my work is only about rings, but I will also see what happens in the wires. Uh, and I will emphasize the difference between decoherence of two phenomena, namely weak localization and aron of bone oscillation. So this is a work was done with Thomas Ludwig, who was my student at this time. Uh, so uh, all this quantum coherent phenomena can only be observed as long as the particle uh, uh, that uh, interferes preserves its uh, coherence uh, and therefore, uh, uh, the, uh, when you have finite temperature, uh, you will have various inelastic processes, scattering of electrons on other electrons, on phonons, and this will destroy the coherence. So at low temperature, this is the electron-electron interaction in these um, systems, which is usually the most relevant, so I will discuss it. So, due to this interaction, there is a finite lifetime of the electron, so electron can be scattered by uh, other electron emit an electron hole pair, and so this will destroy the coherence. And uh, this will set a cutoff for quantum coherent phenomena. It means that on scales longer than this, you will lose uh, the uh, coherence and smear all singularities 
cor uh, corresponding to low frequencies, uh, depending on the phenomenon, maybe frequency magnetic field or voltage that correspond to long times, long distances. So how to find this decay rate? Yeah, so this question about this decay the, def the rate, how long this electron lives, is a very important question that is discussed nowadays in various uh, uh, contexts. Okay, most fancy is, of course, quantum computing, but uh, it's a very important characteristic. So naively, one would just say, let's calculate it perturbatively, just uh, uh, diagrammatically, what will be the lifetime, and that will be it. It turns out uh, that it's not so simple because you encounter infrared singularities in the problem as I explained also in this slide. And so you should be more careful, and in particular, in some cases, the path integral ways of doing this, solving infrared problems are very useful. So uh, when you do it properly, you get uh, some dephasing rate, which is, uh, so this properly defined uh, decay rate is normally called dephasing or decoherence time, uh, denoted tau phi, and it normally scales, well, scales the temperature to some to some power, the rate scales the temperature to some power. So uh, this, for weak localization, this problem was studied in a seminal paper by al Aronov, Aronoff, and Chmielinski in 82. And so what they have done that was the path integral calculation that I will not explain here, but just give much simpler argument, which allows to get the result qualitatively to understand the result. Of course, to believe, uh, you first, as usual story, you first should do real calculation uh, but once you have done it, you can also find some simple way. And since there is also a real calculation that's, that's supported, you, you can sort of also trust this uh, uh, simple explanation. Yeah. So, uh, so basically, the first uh, step is a, is a crucial step is that one can replace interaction, uh, interaction with other electrons by interaction with the noise that other electrons create. And like with noise that you can create, find from fluctuation dissipation theorem, and then basically you look at one elect and the electron uh, in, uh, in uh, subject to this noise and find the, the corresponding uh, dephasing rate. Now, if you do it, uh, you, you get uh, this integral, and you see that in dimensions one and two, it's infrared divergent. Well, you can write it in Q space or in, uh, in uh, uh, frequency space, and it doesn't matter, it's infrared divergent. So it's a for diffusive uh, electrons. And the reason it means that you should be more careful about long wavelength or low frequency uh, fluctuations. And for weak localization, what you can say is that the scales which are larger than your dephasing length itself should not be important. Because the scale of the loop of your weak localization length is just a dephasing length because there is nothing more. And so, and everything which is uh, the momentum, which is the wavelength which is larger than this, it will be essentially constant field, it cannot diffuse. So you, you cut off this self consistently and you get this result for the defacing rate in, uh, say, quite one dimensional system, it behaves like t to the power two thirds, and this is this famous result by al uh, Aronov, and, and Melnitsky. Yeah. So now we can ask the same question for aronov bohm oscillations. We take the same wire, make a loop out of it, a ring, and attach to, uh, to electrodes, measure uh, our own of bomb oscillation, ask the same question. So how, well, slightly different question now we ask, uh, we know that the harmonics will now decay exponentially with uh, a distance uh, size of the ring, or times n, the number of harmonic over the dephasing length. I call it dephasing length with AB for our own of bomb. And uh, so you can ask now, what is this L5? And until this works, so everybody would sort of just admit that it's, you just should take the same length that was calculated for a wire and use it here because it's just a ring made out of the same wire. Now we have done the calculation again with a path integral and it shows that it's different. And namely, there is, and there is of course a very simple argument again to show that the point is that now the trajectories should encircle the ring itself. And so the, the, the slower cutoff will not be self-consistent set by the dephasing length, but rather by the, the system size, the ring size. And so you get the different results for the uh, dephasing rate for Aronov bomb, which is larger. So somehow this is, in some sense, the Aronov bomb effect. And it, we will see it also for other cases. It's a very sensitive detector of uh, uh, decoherence. Uh, uh, yeah, so the conclusion of this set uh, uh, in this case, and as we'll see in the next uh, as well, 
there is a parametric difference between the tau phi for different mesoscopic phenomena. So it's not uh, for this infrared divergent situation, you cannot just say the phasing time or lifetime of electrons. So lifetime may depend on sort of how you look at it. Yeah, uh, yeah there have been experimental verification of this uh, by Hélène uh, Bouchard uh, group. And actually, there was a continuation, some uh, further activity by Gilles uh, Montambeau and his co workers. So probably uh, Gilles will uh, maybe uh, talk about this. Uh, Okay, so now I'm uh, uh, coming to the, uh, another type of systems, namely strictly one-dimensional. So up to now, that was a metallic wire, so it was a thick wire with many channels. Now I will speak about strictly 1D systems just with one channel, which are known with, in the presence of interaction as Lysenger liquid. And so this part on quantum interference and decoherence in this system is a set of papers with... Uh, my collaborator in Karlsruhe, Igor Gordon and uh, Dima Polekov. Uh, uh, yeah, so what is specific about 1D compared to quasi-1D? So uh, first, interaction leads to strong correlations, which are known under the name Latinger liquid, which is an, shows a non-Fermi liquid physics, and in particular, the density of states is suppressed as a power law at the Fermi surface. So when you go to the firm energy, the density of states goes to zero as a power law in, in such a system, and this is a manifestation of non fermi liquid physics. Second, in the system, there is no energy relaxation. If there is no impurities, and yeah, there is an assumption that you do this approximation that you linearize the spectrum, but it's, uh, one can, it's of course an approximation, but it's a good approximation if temperature is much lower than, than uh, firm energy. And then it, there is no energy relaxation. You can create any distribution function to propagate there. So despite the interaction, will not thermalize. So you can ask whether there can be any dephasing in the absence of energy re relaxation. Yeah, and a clean system can be solved by bosonization. So it's, in fact, a Gaussian theory in terms of uh, bosonic excitations. Yeah. OK, now you can also ask whether such systems do exist. Yeah, this 1D systems. And now uh, there is experimentalist study various types of 1D system, it's a carbon nanotubes first. And uh, so this shows some measurements. There are mesoscopic type measurements on carbon nanotubes. So here the conductance is close to the uh, uh, ballistic uh, limit. So it's almost ballistic nanotube. There are also very long nanotubes up to half centimeter long. And so here one, uh, the transport is diffusive. So the conductance is a, is a, the resistance is a linear function of the length, so one can speak about really conductivity of, uh, of these systems. Uh, in addition to nanotubes, there are semiconductor uh, quantum wires. So this is an example from uh, Amir uh, Yikobe, also actually in this university, Alex uh, Palevsky is uh, also studying uh, one-dimensional semiconductor uh, uh, wires, one-channel semiconductor wires, and finally quantum hole edges are perfect. Uh, they are chiral sort of wires, but one can also couple them, counter-propagate, and then one gets also a normal sort of non-chiral uh, wire. So one uh, can ask a question. Uh, what is the, uh, whether the mesoscopic phenomena that I discussed, like localization or uh, other, I don't know, bombs, so what, whether one can consider them also in this larger and the strongly correlated systems, and it turns out that the answer is, is yes. One can, despite the fact that this is not Fermi liquid, one can look at also and say weak localization here. And to be in the weak localization regime, one needs the tau phi, the dephasing, to be shorter than the mean free path, because otherwise everything will localize. And we will see that it requires, this requires sufficiently high temperature. But uh, uh, it turns out that the, that the contribution to this weak localization, it comes from the interference of trajectory, which scatters on three impurities. It's, it's a minimal trajectory that you can reverse in time, and you get something different. Yeah? So you can, these three impurities should be in a line. I, I just showed them this way just to, to help me to, to draw. So you can scatter on the three, back scatter on the three impurities in two different ways. And there is interference of these two. And so you can uh, calculate it. And the calculation gives the weak localization correction to the conductivity, and uh, the weak localization correction is uh, shown here. It's a Drude conductivity times tau phi weak localization over tau, 
squared times some logarithm, where this tau phi, one over tau phi, the dephasing rate for weak localization is a temperature uh, uh, to the power one half divided by the mean free time, by the impurity, elastic mean free time, half, and this is the interaction strength. So this is, a, and the crucial point is here that it, this dephasing rate depends on the impurity, even though on the, on the concentration of impurities. It turns out that if you consider this in a clean system, if I, if I assume there is no more impurities except for these three, and, and I consider there is no, no dephasing of this interference term due to interaction. Uh, so although interference happens on a short scale, and I, would, uh, I need additional impurities uh, to, to get uh, the dephasing. Yeah, well, uh, so, yeah, actually, I, I, okay. <clears throat> the point is that I learned that I have less than other speakers in this session exactly five minutes ago. So, so maybe if, if you give me, if, uh, because I was, I, I just assumed that uh, all speakers have the same time. I'm sorry, but I was not. Yeah, okay, I can stop, of course, but <laughs> I just really, a few minutes ago I was, but if you give me uh, five minutes, to, I, I will finish. I need five minutes. Uh, okay, so uh, uh, this uh, dephasing rate that we get here uh, is shown here. Uh, is 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 a, is depends on the on the concentration of disorder. But now I can ask the same question for. So I don't get for weak localization. I don't get any dephasing in the absence uh, of uh, additional impurities. Now I ask the same question for a run of bomb ring. And the answer is there is a dephasing just for a clean uh, system. I don't need any impurity. Here there is a dephasing which scales linearly with temperature and uh, interaction strength uh, squared. So again, there is a parametric difference between the two, and moreover, without impurities, one of them is simply uh, zero. There is no dephasing for uh, weak localization, and this is because of different geometry uh, of, uh, of two types uh, of problems. Okay, now let me use my okay, last minus two minutes for, uh, to say briefly about the non-equilibrium uh, liquid physics. This is a part done with Dima Gutmann and Joel Geffen who are both here. So the question that uh, we ask here is a question about tunneling spectroscopy, namely, uh, so this is an experiment which is done actually for thick wires, but now one can do it also for 1D, real 1D systems, namely one can create a non-equilibrium distribution function. It's like here shown by a double step distribution function. And uh, one can study uh, the tunnel into the system and study the, uh, the corresponding green function, so tunnel from some external uh, additional tip, and in this way study the tunneling density of states and also the distribution function within the system. And what one finds, one finds some split singularities, each of them corresponds to the zero bias anomaly that I described, but they also are broadened due to distribution function and as we show also by dephasing. So okay, so it's a similar experiment for nanotubes. So, so the setups that we have in mind are shown here as that we have a wire and from two sides, a lateral liquid wire, from two sides there are distribution functions that are injected in this wire and this distribution function may be either with two different temperatures or in the full non-equilibrium just on some form like double step distributions, which are created in some special way. You can create this double step distribution and then inject here. And then we tunnel into the system and probe it. And uh, there are two main messages, which are on these two transparencies, uh, this and the next one, and I stop. So one is that when you tunnel into such system, you have you may have distribution functions which are, so you, you have left movers and right movers which have very well resolved distribution functions. They have very different sort of chemical potentials. And so for weak interaction, you resolve these two edges, fermi edges, and, uh, which are broadened by distribution function, but uh, when you increase the interaction strengths, they merge. And the reason they merge is related to dephasing. So there is a finite dephasing or maybe strong dephasing in the system despite the fact there is no energy relaxation. So in this lesson, that's, that's a very remarkable, it doesn't happen in lower dimensionality electronic systems. And, uh, and the second uh, message is that when you consider arbitrary distribution function, this problem can also be solved exactly, but in more uh, like double step distribution function, 
the problem can be solved exactly in terms of some type of Fredholm uh, determinants which depend on, on some phase delta. And this phase, this, the way one solves is a bosonization. And when one think about fermion in terms of some bosonic excitations, the plasmons, it's a, it has an amplitude 2 pi. This is, a nature, this is what one translated fermion, free fermion into bosonic language. Now, in interacting system, this 2 pi soliton gets fractionalized. It's divided in small pieces uh, due to interaction, and this fractionalization leads uh, to uh, dephasing in this system, and the remarkable feature of this dephasing is, yeah, it's the last plot, that the dephasing rate can be oscillatory function of the interaction strengths. So this is uh, what normally doesn't happen. So normally, of course, an equilibrium with it, Stronger interaction will lead to just stronger dephasing, of course. So here it may oscillate. You increase interaction strength, and the dephasing rate goes down. And you will see it also in our own bomb experiment, as you will see the oscillations of the uh, amplitude of our own bomb oscillations, the function of interaction, if you could change it, of course. Uh, uh, so that's, uh, but theoretically, it's, of course, much easier than experimentally. So, uh, yeah, that, uh, let me finish. I just show the some tricks that I discuss with them. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, we have, sorry, we have no time.